Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 177. Lesson number 177 in the series of basic math. Today we'll do our penultimate video, the sixth lesson in the series of seven on the topic of unit digit. Today we'll have our penultimate lesson. We learned this word penultimate in our vocabulary lesson long time ago on day number on day number 11. Whichever test that you're preparing for, write down the name of the test. GR, for example, GRE, GRE vocabulary words, day 11, or GMAT vocabulary words, day 11. And the video will pop right up. Watch the video and learn the word penultimate, which is just a very fancy way of saying second to the last. We, 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 will, we had planned to do seven seven lesson on the topic of unit digit and today is our sixth lesson the second to the last lesson the penultimate lesson the problem as you can see for today is already on the blackboard let's take a look at it the question simply is what's the remainder what's the remainder when 2 raised to 125 is divided by 5 2 raised to 125 is divided by 5 now the question on the surface doesn't look like it has anything to do with unit digit but it does it has to do with being able to recognize what the unit digit is going to be because what the remainder is going to be of this quantity when you divide it by 5 has everything to do with what the unit digit of this quantity is. Tell you what, I've changed my mind. Let's do a simpler version of this question. Let's do a baby version of it. And then this is this, and then, and then this question is going to be your homework for tomorrow. And we'll do this question on day number 178. Today, let's do a baby version. Instead of 100, rate 2 raised to, 2 raised to 125, let's make it 2 raised to 100. And instead of 5, let's make it 3. So the question now is, what's the remainder when 2 raised to 100 is divided by 3? And these are the answer choices, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Just give me one second. I'm still here. I've not gone anywhere. What I want you to do right now is to pause the video, do the problem yourself, and once you've done so, then we'll compare your work against the work that you and I will do together, as we always do. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. I'll get out of your way. I'm going to read the question one more time. What is the remainder when 2 raised to 100 is divided by 3? I'll give you 5 seconds as I said to pause and unpause the video. Alright, let's get going. I started out by telling you this is a baby version of the original question that we'll do tomorrow, which was 2 raised to 125 divided by 5. This is a baby version for two reasons, and I'm going to explain you the first reason very, uh, right now. This quantity, whatever this quantity is, let's say let's say the quantity is let's say the quantity is seven. If we have to divide, if somebody asks us to divide seven by three, now here's my work. I'm going to show you my work. So I put down one here, and then I and I proudly tell you that my remainder is four. Does it make any sense? No, it makes no sense. The remainder the remainder can never be more than the number that you're dividing by, because if it's four. We could have gone one more round, obviously. We could have gone one more round. Remainder can never be more than what you're dividing by. What's the remainder when this quantity is divided by 3? I don't know what the remainder is. The remainder cannot be 4. Similarly, remainder cannot be 3. For example, for example, if you ask me to divide 12 by 3, 12 by 3, and if I proudly tell you that 12 divided by 3 is 3 and the remainder of 3. That makes no sense. How can the remainder be equal to how can the remainder be equal to or more than what you know, the number that you're dividing by? Because if it's equal to what the number that you're dividing by, why don't you go one more round? Why did you stop at three rounds? We could have gone four rounds. When, since this quantity, whatever this quantity is, since this quantity is being divided by three, remainder can possibly not be three or more. Answer has to be zero, one, two. So that's one reason why this is quote unquote baby version, because without doing any work at all, we can raise our R to one out of three. Because answer choice D and E are just simply silly. Answer choice D and E are simply silly. They're nonsensical. They're idiotic. They're moronic. They make no sense. Remainder cannot be three or more when you're dividing a number by three. If you're dividing a number by seven, whatever the number it is that you're dividing by seven, the remainder in that scenario cannot be seven or more. Do you understand? Let's do the work. As I said before. This question has to do with being able to recognize the unit digit. So let's find out what the unit digits are going to be. For example, 2 raised to 1, 
two, two raised to two, two raised to three, two raised to four, and so on and so forth. Two raised to one is two, then we have four, then eight, then sixteen, then thirty-two, sixty-four, and so on and so forth. And now we're going to divide them by three. Okay, watch what happens. Divide by three. What happens when you divide two by three? If you divide two by three, if you divide two by three, if you divide two by three, how many trees does two have? Two has zero three. Two has no three. Zero times three is zero, and the remainder is two. In other words, two cannot be divided by three. That's just two. Is just the remainder. It goes zero times. It goes zero times. So when you divide this quantity by three, the remainder. These are the remainder. I, I left no room for my, myself. Let's just call it R so, it's, so that you know it's remainder. When we divide two, when we divide two by three, the remainder is going to be two. What do you suppose we'll have when we divide four by three? When we divide four by three, of course the remainder is going to be one. When we divide eight, when we divide eight by three, eight divided by three, the remainder is going to be two. 16 divided by 3, 16 divided by 3, 3 goes 5 times 15, the remainder is 1. 32 divided by 3, 32 divided by 3, the remainder is 2. 63, 63 would have been evenly divisible by 3, but this is 64 because it's 64, the remainder is 1. Are you beginning to see some sort of pattern? Are you beginning to see the pattern? The pattern is very simple, it's just 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, all the way through. This is a this is a this is a baby version of the question that we'll do tomorrow. The second reason is because the string here that repeats, the cycle that repeats, only has two members: two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. That's it. So two raised to two raised to two, two raised to two. When you divide that by three, the remainder remainder is going to be one because two raised to two is the end of the cycle. The cycle is made up of two beads. Two raised to one, two raised to one will have a remainder of two. Two raised to two will have a remainder of one. Two raised to two, rest to two as we can see, is four. Two raised to four, two raised to four. Again, that's a two complete cycle. Two raised to four is right here. It will also have a remainder of one. Remainder is going to be one. Two raised to forty will have a remainder of one. Two raised to two raised to eighty will have a remainder of one. This what we have here is one hundred. 100 is 100 makes 50 complete cycles because each cycle has two beats in it 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 so since we have 100 an even number here that will have 50 complete cycle and as long as the cycle is complete each complete cycle ends at 2 because cycle is made up of two parts 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 question is what's the remainder when 200 2 raised to 100 2 raised to 100 is divided by 3 the answer is 1 the answer is 1 but what I want you to do for tomorrow, what I want you to do for tomorrow is to use the same exact logic, same exact method, same exact rationale, and do this problem. Instead of 2 raised to 100, we have 2 raised to 125, and instead of dividing by 5, instead of dividing by 3, we're going to divide by 5. Answer choice remain the same. Answer choice remain the same. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. A, B, C, D, E. But now, because we are dividing by 5, we cannot rule out anything right off the bat. We cannot. It is possible for, if you, if you divide a quantity by 5, it is possible to have a remainder of 4 or 3 or 2 or 1 or even 0 if it's evenly divisible. So we cannot rule out any answer choice right off the bat. We're going to have to do the work. But we'll do this tomorrow. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.